I'm Annie Sibonet. I've worked as a chef and traveled the world and found that food tells the story of a country and its culture as well as any language. And when I got to Spain, I knew I'd found my culinary home. One of the most essential ingredients in Spanish cooking is fire. Over wood embers, charcoal, or vine cuttings, smoke is the seasoning of choice for the grill-crazy Spanish, who are devising delicious new ways to cook over an open flame. Meat, seafood, even ice cream. No matter where you are in Spain, when it comes to grilling, this country is on fire. The Spanish are very fond of food grilled over wood embers or vine cuttings. For the Spanish, fire isn't just a source of fuel, it's a seasoning, and perhaps one of the greatest flavor enhancers. In the wine region of Rioja, shepherds here make their living in the traditional way, and it's still common to see a shepherd cooking a meal over an open fire. My friend and winemaker Alvaro Palacios has shepherds tending to his own flock of sheep who graze near his award-winning vineyards. And at Alvaro's, the vineyards not only lend themselves to amazing wines, but grilling over these vine cuttings give a rustic and fragrant flavor and aroma to food. So there is not a lot of green grass around. Right. So these kind of sheep, they eat the rosemary, they eat the thyme. And that, of course, translates in the flavor of the meat. So they must be delicious. Yeah, very fine. When the shepherds took their midday meal, they would often stop and rest at a traditional stone hut or corral like this one, then make a fire and cook whatever was at hand, fueling it and flavoring it with the cuttings. This is the true taste of Rioja. So these are organic vine cuttings from Alvaro's vineyards here in Rioja. Never ever it has any kind of uh, insecticide, fungicide, organic agriculture. Esto todo, yeah. <laughs> Whenever I smell smoke or fire, it's like opens up my appetite for the meal. It's that primal flavor that I crave. Spain is on fire. Spain's on fire! <laughs> I was actually taught by Alvaro how to drink from this traditional bota or the goat skin. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. <laughs> so, Alvaro, what have you prepared for us? Bueno, we are preparing, first of all, we did, uh, we are doing the face of the hog, and then you know that it's going to be cut into small pieces. Oh, my God. Look how beautiful this looks. So, this would be Bien a traditional mio. dish, I guess, prepared by shepherds. Si, si. Very, very traditional. Everything smells so incredible. We have suckling lamb, so lamb that's still on its mother's milk, no more than 50 days old. Doesn't need anything else, just a little touch of salt. These chops look so unbelievable. As much as I think I could eat this all myself, I know I probably can't, <laughs> so we're going to invite some more shepherds to join us in this meal. Hi, <laughs> Yeah, the, the salmon's from the same vineyard of the wine in the bota. Mm. Eh, la chamarita from the, from the area the same, kilometro cero, zero kilometers. <laughs> Todo es pure balance, harmony, it's not perfection. Alvaro, this is so good. It's so tender and slightly sweet. So a very typical dish here in Rioja, which is the face of the hog. It's like bacon, but uh, the finest side of, of a bacon would be. <laughs> I love it. So bacon? Bacon. bacon? Alvaro makes drinking out of the bota look easy, but it's Alvaro. not. Much <laughs> like making great wine. <laughs> this is amazing. Let's go have a picnic down by the riverside. Alvaro's taking me through his prized La Montesa vineyard. Just one of the vineyards from which he cultivates the grapes that has made him one of the most celebrated winemakers in the world. A paradise for you and me. 
This is where he grew up, caring for the vines in the Riojan tradition, using the cuttings to aromatize the fire as a way to flavor food. I think I did that one very well. <laughs> and though we had a rustic grilled feast with the shepherds, there's still another dish he had stewing all day waiting for us at his stone hut, prepared, of course, over an open fire. The last touch of this dish, the pato rio. Oh, the Most pato rio that you were telling me about. This is your your dish. It is my dish. Die for. It is my dish that I will die for. But it's the dish that many Riojan people will die for. Great, and look how beautiful it is. Like cooked in the middle of your house over an open fire. Absolutely. And you know what is made with the tribes of the little lambs. Wow. Everything with tomato, also with the with the with the red pep, dry red peppers, delicious. Oh, Pure and amazing is, thing. It's isn't incredible. It? It's just like it's the smell of comfort with the smoke from the fire. Wow. That's amazing. Really, really penetrating, really deep, really profound. Huh? I can't wait hey, to bueno. try this dish. Ay. Wine also, zero kilometers, right? One kilometer from here. Awesome. From La Montesa Placet Ferro Zero Eight. Mm. It has that smokiness from cooking it over the open fire. When you burn these vine cuttings, what flavor does it impart on the food? You see that it's a very fine kind of wood that offers a very refined aroma. It's never dominating the meat, just giving a little hint of... Uh, like a light smoke. Exactly, mm -hmm. muy suave. You don't typically think of stews being done over a fire, but this is really a traditional way to eat for the shepherds in this area. And thank you so much for sharing this dish with me. I think that fire really touches on so many sensibilities and, and all of your senses. It's not just about how the food is being prepared, but when you smell that smoke, it brings back memories from your childhood. It brings back flavors of some of the most incredible meals because when you eat food outdoors, cooked over an open fire like that, it could never taste any better.